This is Brokey.com. We're here with Georgie Karakanian, featherweight fighter, holds a record of 11 1 and 1, fighting out of Millennium Jiu Jitsu and USKO. So, first thing we want to cover is Georgie, you were born in Russia. Yes. Moscow, to be exact. Yes, Moscow. But you're of Armenian descent. Yeah, my, both my parents are Armenians, but I was just born in Russia. So, if someone asks you what, you're, what you are, what do you say, Armenian or Russian? Well, it depends who I'm next to. So, if I'm next to Russians, I'll. I'll call it a Russian, but if I'm next to Armenians, I'm Armenian. <laughs> so, if we were to have Carl Parisian and Fedor Emilian yeah, go fight each other, you well, you are with I'll Armenians. I'll be 50-50. Uh, <laughs> but if you're with Armenians, you're going for Parisian. If you're with Russians, you're yeah, going yeah, for Fedor. Yeah. All right. I mean, I speak both languages perfect. Oh, you do? Okay, yeah. that's cool. So, you actually started off uh, interested in playing professional soccer, correct? That's correct. And you play for uh, a couple reserve clubs. Yeah, I played in uh, Spain for FC Tarragona, that's a reserve team for Barcelona. And I played also in uh, Russia for FC Torpedo. And I also played here in the United States for uh, US under 18, 19, and 23. So what deterred you from actually um, following the soccer career? Uh, just uh, the 1994 World Cup. Just watching that thing, it just, I just told myself I have to become professional. And so your your father, however, has a history in sambo, correct? That's correct. And karate? Sambo and karate. He's a black belt in karate. And did he influence you wanting to practice um, martial arts and becoming a professional martial arts fighter? No. No? no? He was happy with me being a professional soccer player. Okay. So I never thought I was going to be a fighter, you know. So what changed your mind and made you become a fighter? Uh, well, I started doing jiu-jitsu when I was 19. Okay. And I was doing jiu-jitsu for about five, six months. And they asked me if I want to fight at King of the Cage. And I said, okay, I'll just try. I just wanted to try to see what it feels like. And you went in and you submitted. Yeah, I won. And, uh, oh, man, it was horrible. My stand-up was horrible. All I had is the guillotine choke. That's all I knew. That's you so that's how I finished the guy with the guillotine choke. So I liked the feeling. It was good. And the rest is history now. You've yeah. been in the game for a couple of years now. Yeah. Like you mentioned before, you're 11, 1-1. One and one, And you're, you know upstart fighter, I mean, you're going to start making waves pretty soon. I'm hoping so, yeah. That's what I'm here for. And so you have the one blemish on your record, which was a split decision loss to Chris David at Gladiator Challenge 74. So a split decision loss pretty much means that it could go either way. Yeah. So how was it that you think the judges came to that decision? I mean, I don't think I sold enough tickets. You don't think you sold enough tickets? tickets so that's why I worked with Gladiator Challenge. If you don't sell tickets, but no, nah, it's I, I gave him the first round because I had no wrestling. Uh -huh. All I was doing is jujitsu and stand up. So I thought, oh, I'm four and zero, I'm good. I don't need no wrestling. And he had really good wrestling on. First round, he took me down a couple of times, but second and third, I don't know how to get a fight to him. So. Yeah, hey, it happens. Everybody. Yeah, but I, it was a learning experience. I, yeah, so now, now I just all I do is wrestle. Okay, so just so you can control the fight, not right. just, uh, not just finish the fight. Because right. I mean. Out of all your fights, only one's gone to a decision, right? Only one victory is a decision. Right. That a victory decision is over Armando. Yeah, I and won, yeah. everything else has been submission or knockout. Yes, correct. So out of all your fights, which is probably the most memorable that you can recall? Uh, probably the fight against Bobby Merrill with oh. the flying knee. The flying knee kill, yeah. yeah, that's actually that was probably a... my favorite of yours also. <laughs> that was a three-day notice, and uh, we just took the fight. And uh, I was losing the first round, and I remember my corner bit. He told me just when you come out, just throw a jab, jab, and knee. He and was I a wrestler, also correct. Very good wrestler with record of eight and two. Yeah. And he eight. kept on taking you down, oh, so you had to strong. Very had strong. to counter that attack. And came out really for good. anyone who hasn't seen it, he pretty much leveled him with one of the best knees that you could probably <laughs> find out there. So, if you uh, could get a rematch with Chris David, would you take it? Oh yeah, I've been trying to call him up, so, oh, so uh, hopefully, some, I don't know. hopefully accept soon and then uh, you can write that. Yeah, write but I'm that. not going to chase him, you know? Yeah, I mean. It's, I, I don't get it all. It was a learning experience. It was a good thing actually for me to lose because I got humbled up. Yeah. So when you start off 4-0 uh, like you did, mm -hmm. I, I mean that has to make you feel like you're almost invincible as you said and then it made you humble when you found Yeah, that's it. I think any day you feel like that, like a star freak, there's no point of fighting because you have to think that you're still not good, you still have to learn. But the way I was thinking, I was like, oh man, I'm 4-0, just not You're like, just going to win the fight. There's so much, 
space here to learn MMA. You know. So uh, what does your training consist of now? I mean, you mentioned that you're constantly working on your wrestling. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, do you focus on jiu-jitsu a to, lot less than before? No, I still do jiu-jitsu a lot. I just try to evolve a lot. Just different training partners, and I get used to the same partners. Go di gym to gym to see, spar with professional boxers, Muay Thai fighters. Just like over here, I'm sparring with Joey Pagu, so just evolve, you know. That's, That's how you get better. So, how are you interested in uh, taking any fights outside of MMA, kind of Muay Thai or anything actually, else? Yeah, actually, I am. I want to take a professional Muay Thai fights. So okay. I'm working on that. And you com you constantly compete in grappling tournaments. Yeah. So your last one was when? My last one was uh, probably a month ago against Joe Camacho. Okay. Very good fighter. I have a lot of respect to him. And so then, what's next for you? Uh, I'm hoping WEC. WEC? WEC or some big, big organizations. So okay. you, you ready to make uh, waves in the featherweight yeah, WEC yeah, yeah. division? Yeah. Uh, Uriah Favor, Mike Brown, all those types of guys. Yeah. So they better watch out because George Ricardo Canyon is coming, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> so if uh, you could finish a fight any way you want, how would it be? I mean, we know you have outstanding submissions and you've proven you can knock somebody out, but what would you be your method of ending one, ending a fight? I think uh, knockout. A knockout? Knockout, it feels better than... It's more satisfying. Yeah. So, a lot of, I mean, most people don't get to experience what it is to let alone fight in a sanctioned bout and then knock somebody out. What's the feeling when you knock somebody out? Um, let me find it. It feels better than, uh, better than sex, better than ecstasy. That's what yeah. <laughs> everyone who's not overage, don't try into that, <laughs> but everyone else should know what we're talking about. And now, if you could fight any fighter at this moment, and they said, have your pick of the litter, who would you pick? I think Jose Aldo. Jose Aldo? Yeah. WEC yeah, fighter? Yeah, WEC fighter. Whoever fights for him, it did, like, they go his, his strategy because he wants to keep it distance from you and keep it standing, but no one was taken down, so I think... You could, you could yeah. exploit yeah. What, yeah. the weaknesses that he does have. Yeah. So, now we know, you know, great featherweight fighter, up and coming, um, potential to finish any fight, which has been proven by your only one fight going to decision, you know, and you had a split decision loss that obviously, um, you know, there's some little bit of controversy behind yeah. that. Um, what would you be doing if you weren't a professional fighter? Uh, probably a police officer. Police officer? Yeah. And. I'll be, or soccer player. Police officer, soccer player? Yeah. Maybe you could be. You know, police officer, yeah. soccer, police officer by day, soccer player by night. Yeah. So this was Brokey.com. This was Georgie Karakanyan here. And if you have any time, you can drop some. We have time, so I mean, sorry, you can drop uh, your sponsors. Uh, yeah, I'd like to thank uh, Clinch Gear, ClinchGear.com, uh, Nutri Shop from Riverside, and uh, my training partners are Melania, MeleniaMMA.com, and USKO. And also, if you guys want to check out my website, at GeorgiaMMA.com. And this was Brokey.com. We'd like to thank you. And like you said, if you want to find out any more information on him, go to GeorgiaMMA.com.